Good day. This is our last lesson for quarter 3 in statistics and probability. Central limit theorem. With learning competencies, restricts the central limit theorem and defines the sampling distribution of the sample mean using the central limit theorem. Theorem 3 does 1. The mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean is equal to the population mean that is mu sub x bar is the mean of the sampling distribution of sample means is equal to mu which is the population mean. And under theorem 3-2, the variance and standard deviation of sampling distribution of the sample means are as follows. For the variance of sampling distribution of the sample mean is we have sigma sub x bar squared is equal to sigma squared divided by n. And for the standard deviation of sampling distribution of the sample means is sigma sub x bar is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. For example, find the sample variance and the sample standard deviation of a population given that sigma is equal to 5 and n is equal to 10. For standard deviation, we're going to use this formula, then substitute the value of sigma which is 5 squared, then divided by the value of n which is 10. 5 squared is equal to 25 divided by 10 which is equal to 2.5. And for the standard deviation, we have sigma sub x bar is equal to the value of sigma, which is 5 divided by square root of 10, which is equal to 3.6162, and that is approximately 1.58. So therefore, the variance is 2.5, and the standard deviation is 1.58. If the standard deviation is used as an estimator of population parameter instead of the mean, then the standard error is equal to sigma sub x bar squared is equal to sigma divided by the value, the square root of the value of n. The transformation of the z score considering the standard deviation is z is equal to mean less population mean divided by the standard deviation over the square root of n. Wherein that is under theorem 3, the 3, which is the central limit theorem, states that the formula for the z score when working with the sample mean is given by, so we have z score is equal to x bar, which is the sample mean minus mu, which is the population mean, divided by sigma, which is the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of n, which is the sample size. Remember that the distribution is approximately normal if n is greater than or equal to 30, regardless of the shape of the distribution. And if n is less than or equal to 30, the sample mean is also approximately normal as long as the population is normally distributed. So the formula for the sampling distribution of the normal population, if the population variance is given, is the same as finding for the value of z under the central limit theorem. For example, the average time it takes a group of CCNHS students to complete a statistics test is 54.8 minutes. The standard deviation is 5 minutes. We shall assume that the data are normally distributed. If there are 50 randomly selected students, what is the probability that the mean it takes the group to finish the test will be less than 53 minutes? So first, we're going to identify the given wherein the population is 50, 
and sample mean is 53 we have the population mean is 54.8 and the standard deviation is 5 second step we're going to identify what is us since we are finding the probability for 50 students to finish the test at 53 minutes so therefore what is asked in the problem is the probability of x less than 53 then third identify the formula so we're going to use the formula for the central limit theorem then fourth solution to the problem so we're going now to show the solution or solve the problem using the z score substitute the value of the mean which is 53 and the population mean is 54.8 divided by the standard deviation which is 5 divided by the square root of n which is 15 53 less 54.8 is negative 1.8 and 5 divided by the square root of 50 is equal to 0 0.707 then divide negative 1.8 by 0.707 that is equal to negative 2.55 so we're going now to find the value of negative 2.55 to the z table. So locate negative 2.5 and 0 0.05, where in the value of negative 2.55 is equal to 0 0.0054. And that is also equal to 0.54%. Then the next step or the fifth step is we're going to illustrate using the normal curve. So we're going now to locate negative 2.55, which is between negative 3 and negative 2. So therefore, we're going to find the area for this. And that is also equal to 0.54%. And for the sixth step, we're going to state your final answer. That is the probability that 50 randomly selected students will finish the test in less than 53 minutes is... 0.54%. Another example, an investigator of a case of food poisoning found that the amount of salmonella in every serving of food is normally distributed with an average of 3.7 colony forming units per gram and a standard deviation of 1.19 colony forming unit per gram. In additional information about salmonella, salmonellosis is primary a disease of the animals. Man get infection from the farm animal and poultry through contaminated meat, milk and milk products, sausages, custards, eggs and eggs products, rat and, rat and mice are another source. They are often heavily infected and contaminate the food stuff by their urine and faces so the problem that we're going to solve is for number one what is the probability that a selected serving has at least 4.2 colony forming unit per gram of salmonella and second what is the probability that the mean of 10 randomly selected servings is at least 4.2 colony forming unit per gram so first we're going to solve the first problem or the first question so using the first step or following the first step we are going to identify the given wherein given is per serving so that n is equal to 1 where in the sample mean is 4.2 and the population mean is 3.7 and the standard deviation is 1.19 colony forming unit per gram so next, identify what is asked. So we're going to find the probability of x which is greater than or equal to 4.2. So identify the formula using the central limit theorem. So the next solution to the problem, substitute the value of sample mean which is 4.2 and the population mean is 3.7 divided by the standard deviation which is 5 over the square root of n which is 50. 4.2 less 3.7 is equal to 0 0.5 and 5 divided by the square root of 50 is equal to 1.19. Then divide 0 0.5 by 1.19 so we have 0 0.42. So we're going now to find the value of 0 0.42 using the z table. So we have 0 0.4 and 0 0.02 
where in the value is 0 0.6628 and 0 0.6628 is also equal to 66.28 percent then we're going to illustrate using the normal curve so we have 0 0.42 this is uh, 4.42 so therefore we're going to find this area where in the value of less than 0.42 is 66.28 percent since we are going to find greater than 4.42 and the total area of a normal curve is 100 percent so we're going to subtract 66.28 to 100 percent which is equal to 33.72 percent so therefore the probability is for final answer so we have the probability that the selected serving has at least 4.2 colony forming unit per gram of salmonella is 33.72%. And for the next problem or for the second question, so still given is 3.7 for some population mean but for this time n is equal to 10. That is for 10 servings. Then population sample mean is 4.2 and standard deviation is still 1.19. So using the z score, so substitute the value of mean which is 4.2, population is 3.7, standard deviation is 1.19, and n is 10. 4.2 less 3.7 is 0 0.5 and 1.19 divided by the square of 10 is 0 0.3763 which is also equal to 1.33. So to illustrate, so we have here 1.33. So we're going to find this area greater than 1.33. Now finding the value of 1.33 using the z table so we have 1.3 and 0 0.03 which is equal to 0 0.9082 so therefore the area of 1.33 is 0 0.9082 and the probability of x which is greater than 1.33 is subtracting that to 1 or that's for 100 percent which is equal to 0 0.01 0, 0.918 or 9.18 percent so therefore the probability that tensor being has at least 4.2 colony forming units per gram of salmonella is 9.18 percent so to find now for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means from 10 sample servings so using theorem 3-2 that is finding the standard deviation so we're going now to find what is standard deviation given which is 1.19 then n is 10 so 1.19 divided by the square root of 10 that is equal to 0 0.376 and for one serving that is 1.19 divided by the square root of 1 which is equal to 1.19 so therefore, 0.376 is the lower standard deviation and 1.19 is the higher standard deviation. So the figure tells that the lower the value of the standard deviation, the lower or shorter the spread of the distribution is around the mean. Otherwise, the spread of the distribution is wider around the mean. Next problem, your phone company claims that the life of their butter products is approximately normally distributed with a mean length of 8 hours of battery life when used in DC motors with a standard deviation 3.8 hours. What is the probability that 10 batteries will have a mean lifespan of less than 6 hours in DC motors? So given is mean 8 hours, and the standard deviation is 3.8, population is 10, and the population mean is 6. So let's try now to write the given, n is 10, population, sample mean 6, population mean is 8, standard deviation is 
So using the central limit theorem or finding for the z, substitute the value of mean, which is 6 minus 8 divided by 3.8 over the square root of 10. And that's equal to negative 2 divided by 1.2017 is equal to negative 1.66. So finding now the value of one, negative 1.66, so we have negative 1.6 and 0 0.06, so therefore the value is 0, 485. So to illustrate now, so we have now, this is negative 1.66. So we're going to find the area of this, which is equal to 0 0.485 or that is 4.85%. So therefore, the probability that the sample of 10 batteries will have a mean lifespan of less than 6 hours is 4.85%. So for your activity, you're going to solve this problem completely following the steps in solving the problem. So we have one. For number two, we have two questions to be answered. And that's all. Thank you. And please keep safe and stay at home. Keep safe, everyone. Have a nice day.